Hi everyone, I'm Michael Wascom, and I'm going to tell you about a data set of fMRI data from humans while they viewed natural images. This data set was originally collected and published by Kendra Kay in Jack Gallant's lab. In the original paper, the authors reported that they were able to identify the image subjects were looking at based only on their brain activity as reported using fMRI. And this was an exciting finding because it was the first demonstration of something akin to mind reading. But underlying a technological goal like mind reading are a number of really interesting scientific questions about how information is represented and transformed across brain areas. And this data set can be used to investigate some of those questions. The original experiment was quite simple. Human subjects simply laid in an MRI scanner and passively viewed a stream of natural images. I'm showing you some examples of the images here. They come from a large number of different image categories, and they were just grayscale images with no color information. While the subjects viewed these images, their brain activity was recorded using fMRI. Now fMRI, as you may know, records a signal related to the oxygenation of blood in the brain, which gives you an indirect correlate of neural activity. And the fundamental unit of measurement in fMRI is what's called a voxel, which you can think of as the volume analog of a pixel. Each voxel in this data set is about two millimeters on each side. So remember that that's going to correspond to the aggregate activity of tens of thousands of neurons. Now, another thing to know about fMRI data is that it's relatively noisy. In the original experiment, each image was repeated 13 times. And the data set that you'll be working with is going to reflect the average response across those 13 presentations of each image in every voxel. So you can think of the data you'll be working with as reflecting the profile of responses in each voxel across the set of images uh, that were shown to the subject. So for any given image, each voxel is going to respond a little bit differently. Now the units that fMRI measures are essentially arbitrary, so the data you're working with are going to be z-scored. Different uh, images will evoke different patterns of responses across voxels. And if you can model those patterns of responses in a way that captures the differences meaningfully, you might be able to say something about how the brain is responding to and representing the content in each image. And so the way the data that you'll be working with are organized is a 2D array or matrix where the rows of the matrix correspond to the individual stimulus, stimuli or images that the subject saw. And the columns of the matrix correspond to the voxels uh, in visual cortex. So each entry in this matrix tells you about a particular voxel's response to a particular stimulus image. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the model that was presented in the original paper because it'll give you a sense of how you might analyze and work with these data. You can read the paper if you're interested in the details. The basic idea was to model the responses to each individual image uh, as um, uh, with a set of simple image filters called a Gabor wavelet pyramid. So each filter is a Gabor, which is a sine wave grading multiplied by a Gaussian. And each filter has a different spatial position, spatial frequency, orientation, and size. And then the idea is that responses in each voxel were modeled as a weighted sum of these filter responses. So the goal was to learn these feature weights as you were training the model and then to evaluate the model by asking whether it's possible to identify a novel image that a subject is looking at from a set of possible images just based on the responses across the voxels that are being reported. So given some pattern of brain activity, is it possible to say this is the image from the set that the subject is looking at? It turns out that it is. In the original paper, it was reported that over 90% of images could be identified accurately Using, using this simple receptive field model that I just told you about. So that's very impressive performance, but there are a number of unanswered questions about exactly what kind of information is represented in each of these brain areas. And one way you might ask, uh, answer those questions is to ask, what can you reconstruct about the images from the brain activity? Another really important aspect of this data set is that fMRI measures responses in multiple brain areas simultaneously. In this data set, there are data from seven different areas in visual cortex. Now, as you may know, functional areas in visual cortex are organized in a roughly hierarchical processing stream. 
So there are early visual areas, V1, V2, and V3, that are thought to respond to relatively simple features of stimuli, such as the um, spatial frequency information that the uh, Gabor Wavelet Pyramid model captures. And then more intermediate regions like V4, V3AB, and areas in the lateral occipital cortex are thought to have more complex response properties. And indeed, the model that I just told you about only worked well in these early visual regions. And so there's a lot of unanswered questions about just what kinds of uh, response properties these more intermediate regions in, like V4 and the lateral occipital cortex have, and whether we can truly build models that can use the data um, in these regions to tell us something about what the subject is seeing. So the, the data set has responses in each of these regions, and I'm just showing you here uh, the size of the regions in terms of the number of voxels, which may be relevant for some of your analyses. So there's a tutorial notebook that will tell you how to uh, load these data and recreate some of the plots that I've made in these slides. There are three different kinds of data structures in this data set. The first are the stimulus images themselves. The second are the voxel response profiles, so the actual fMRI data. And something that's important to know is that both the stimuli and the responses are split into the original training and validation or test sets from the original paper. So that can be useful if you want to build a model and then compare its performance to what was reported in the original paper. The final component of the data set is a vector that tells you which region of interest, or ROI, uh, each voxel belongs to. And so ROI is a vector of indices, and then ROI names maps those indices to the names of the visual areas. Good luck.